This is Harsh Rules, I'm Ben Harsh, and today we're going to learn to play Commands and Colors Ancients. Commands and Colors Ancients was released in 2006 by GMT Games and designed by Richard Borg. This game supports up to two players and most scenarios can be completed in less than an hour. Before we begin this episode, I'd like to recognize the Harsh Rules Patreon supporters that help make content like this possible. If you'd like to support the channel, head over to patreon.com slash harsh rules to learn more. And once again, thank you for your support. Welcome back to the Harsh Rules Breakdown for Commands and Colors Ancients. In this episode, we're going to cover special actions like evade, as well as leaders and elephants. We've got a lot to cover, so let's get started. When being attacked in close combat, the defender may announce the unit is going to evade instead of staying and fighting. Please note though, an attacking unit may not evade if the defender battles back. The following units are eligible to evade. Green circle light units, war machines, and leaders if they are alone. Camels and medium cavalry may evade foot and heavy mounted units, and heavy infantry and heavy chariots may evade foot and elephant units. The following units may never evade. Auxilia infantry, warrior infantry, me medium infantry, heavy infantry, and elephants. When a unit evades, it moves two hexes towards its own side of the battlefield. Essentially, this is a choice by the defender to withdraw their unit rather than stay and battle back. A quick note, however, an attacking unit may not evade if the defender battles back. A unit may not be able to evade, though, if the hexes behind it are blocked. Let's take a look. Typically, when a unit conducts an evade, it moves two hexes towards its own side of the battlefield. A one hex evade is permitted if it is the only possible hex available. However, an evade is prohibited if the first movement hexes are blocked. Prior to making an evade movement, the attacking unit determines and rolls the appropriate number of battle dice. However, only symbols that match the evading unit will score a hit. All other unit symbols, leader, sword, and flag die results are ignored. If the die results against the evading unit eliminates that unit, then a victory banner is gained. If the evading unit receives a hit and has an attached leader, a leader casualty check is made to see if the leader is hit using normal rules. We'll cover those rules a little bit later in this episode. Let's cover some of the special evade maneuvers. First, conducting an evade with a war machine. With a war machine evade, the attacking unit rolls normally against the evading war machine unit, if that unit is eliminated, the attacker gains a victory banner. However, if the war machine is not eliminated, it executes a valid one or two hex evade move and then the war machine unit is removed from the battlefield. Essentially, this means the war machine crew has escaped and the attacker does not gain a victory banner. Next, we're going to discuss what happens when a leader evades as well as their other special abilities. Leaders provide units with a number of benefits. First, when attached or adjacent to a friendly non-elephant unit in close combat, all leader die results equate to a hit. Second, when a unit is attached to a leader or adjacent to a lone leader plus one other adjacent friendly unit, this bolsters morale and allows that unit to ignore one flag. Third, a leader allows any attached foot unit to make a bonus close combat after a momentum advance. And finally, leaders enable the use of several command cards that provide benefits when moving units. There are a number of situations when a leader casualty check must be taken. When a leader is attached to a unit and the unit loses one or more blocks without being eliminated, there is a chance the leader may also be hit. Make a leader casualty check by rolling two battle dice. To hit the leader, the player needs to roll two leader symbols. 
A quick note, only one leader casualty check is made during any combat sequence. When a leader is attached to a unit and the unit is eliminated, leaving the leader alone in the hex, the leader casualty check is made with only one die. To hit the leader, a player needs to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not hit on this single die roll, the leader must evade one, two, or three hexes back towards its own side of the battlefield. Flags rolled against a unit that was eliminated have no effect on the leader. When the attached leader's unit is eliminated in close combat, the attacking unit may momentum advance into the vacated hex, and the leader evades out of that hex. When a leader is alone in a hex, in other words they're not attached to another unit, and it is attacked by ranged combat or close combat, the unit attacking the leader determines the normal number of battle dice to roll. To score a hit and eliminate the leader, the player will need to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not eliminated, he must then evade. In this case, the attacking unit may not make a momentum advance after close combat against an unattached leader, whether that leader is eliminated or not. The leader evade process is somewhat different from that of units. A leader may evade one, two, or three hexes back towards its own side of the battlefield. When a leader evades, he must follow these rules. A leader's evade movement is one, two, or three hexes towards their side of the battlefield. The player who controls the leader determines the number of hexes he will move, and which path he will take as he evades. An evading leader may move through friendly units, but they may not end their evade movement in a hex that contains another friendly leader, impassable terrain, an enemy unit, or an enemy leader. An evading leader may move through an enemy unit, but this is governed by the rules for leader escape, which we will cover in just a moment. If a leader's evade movement ends in a hex with a friendly unit, they become attached to that unit. A player may also choose to evade their leader off the side of the battlefield. This saves the leader from becoming a victory banner for the opponent. If the leader cannot evade a minimum of one hex due to impassable terrain, the leader is eliminated and the opponent gains one victory banner. Next, let's talk about leader escape. If enemy units occupy one or two hexes of a leader's designated evade path, the evading leader must attempt to escape through those hexes. First, move the leader onto one of the enemy hexes. Allow the enemy unit in the hex to battle the leader. The attacking unit uses its normal number of close combat dice. The leader does not benefit from terrain. Next, to score a hit on a leader trying to escape, the attacker needs to roll one leader symbol. If the leader is not hit, his escape is successful, and he continues with his evade into the next hex. If this hex is also occupied by an enemy unit, the leader must again undergo the escape procedure. If his third hex of movement is also onto a hex with enemy units, he is eliminated, and the opponent gains a victory banner. Finally, if the leader ends his escape move onto a hex with a friendly unit, he becomes attached to it. Now that we have a better understanding of leaders, let's take a look at elephants. One of the most interesting units in Commands and Colors Ancients are the War Elephants. An elephant unit may either stay in position or move one or two hexes and then close combat an adjacent enemy unit. In close combat, an elephant unit will roll the same number of battle dice as the unit it is attacking would normally roll against it. When an elephant unit battles back after being attacked in close combat, it will roll the same number of dice as the unit which made the attack, but does not use any bonus die that the attacking unit receives. There are some exceptions to the battle back rules though. Elephants roll three dice versus other elephants, heavy chariots, warriors, and camels. They roll one die versus a leader. When an elephant conducts close combat, there are some additional benefits to die results. First, each sword symbol an elephant unit rolls in close combat scores one hit. Furthermore, each battle die producing a sword hit is rolled again for possible additional symbol hits, sword hits, or flag results. 
All hits and retreats scored are applied only after the extra rolls have been completed. One exception to this rule, if the elephant is attacking a unit that due to terrain or its own ability can ignore sword hits, then do not re-roll them. Next, a leader does not modify an elephant unit's close combat dice. Therefore, the leader helmet symbol does not score hits. Keep in mind that an elephant unit will not receive close combat or morale benefits from an attached leader or close combat benefits from a leader in an adjacent hex. Finally, horses were easily frightened by elephants in battle. If a cavalry or chariot unit is forced to retreat when in battle with an elephant unit, it must retreat one additional hex for each flag rolled by the elephant. When an elephant is defending from an attack, certain die results have additional rules in effect. First, an elephant unit ignores all sword hits rolled against it in close combat. Next, when being attacked by cavalry or chariots, the elephant unit may ignore one heavy unit hit and one flag die result. Finally, if an elephant receives a retreat flag die result, this triggers a rampage. Let's take a closer look at what this means. When an elephant retreats, it first goes on a rampage before it is moved back. All units and any leaders who are alone in adjacent hexes, whether they're friend or foe, must check to see if they are trampled. This can even include the attacker who prompted the rampage. To conduct a rampage, roll two dice for each adjacent hex with a unit or a lone leader. During a rampage, the opponent rolls for hits on their units, and the elephant owner rolls for friendly hits on its own units. A hit is scored when the symbol rolled matches the unit type. A leader helmet will eliminate a lone leader. If the leader is not hit on the rampage roll, he must evade. All other symbols are ignored. After the rampage, the elephant completes its retreat movement, if the retreat path of an elephant unit towards its side of the battlefield is occupied by friendly units, enemy units, or a lone enemy leader, the elephant is not moved back and does not lose any blocks. Rather, the units or enemy leader that occupy the hexes of the retreat path must each lose one block for each hex of its retreat that the elephant was unable to fulfill. A lone enemy leader is removed without a leader casualty check and counts as a victory banner. A lone friendly leader does not block the elephant's retreat. The elephant unit would move onto the hex with the lone friendly leader and cease further retreat. This is the only case where a leader can influence an elephant. And now that we've covered these additional rules for evade, leaders, and elephants, you should be ready to play more advanced scenarios in Commands and Colors Ancients. If you found this video helpful, please give me a like and share with your friends. To be the first notified when the next episode of Harsh Rules becomes available, please hit the bell icon for notifications. And as always, this is Ben Harsh for Harsh Rules. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you on the next video.